Let's get some more on this by speaking to Tracy Rogers, a marine ecologist at the University of New South Wales, who's joining us now from Sydney. Tracy Rogers, good to have you with us. So first up, after this news was announced, how did the marine ecologist world react? Well, I think people are quite excited because this is the second piggy blue whale population that us and our colleagues have found within the last couple of years. So it's it's terrific that we're boosting um, our understanding of how many uh, blue whales are actually out there. And just to explain how this will expand our knowledge of this subspecies, and can you clear up why are these pygmy blue whales? Is that something that we should know? Well, in, in saying pygmy blue whales, before you so sort of talked about that the largest mammals in the world, they're actually the largest animals ever that we've had on Earth. And by pygmy, it makes them sound really small, but they're, 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 not, they're actually still absolutely enormous. So the true blue whale is the Antarctic blue whale. They're the largest of the blue whales. Then there's different subspecies. And the pygmy blue whale is just slightly smaller. Um, and there's uh, other groups as well. And this group, the pygmies, are in the Indian Ocean and then off the, the east coast of Australia as well. And it's incredible that sort of... Uh technology used to detect the explosion of nuclear bombs underwater was used to find these things. Does that tell us that there are more of these communities hiding somewhere in the deep ocean? Well, hopefully, absolutely. Hopefully there are more of these uh, well communities out there. But what I find is, is, is fantastic is that this infrastructure is there for, for peace and that we can use it for science as well. Um, so I think I think that's absolutely fabulous, this international infrastructure, which no scientific team or groups of scientific teams could actually uh, afford to have um, these hydroacoustic listening stations all around the world recording continuously for, in any one of these positions, we have up to 18 years' worth of continuous data. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing that these things, science, uh, have come together to give us this discovery. And so where are we now, uh, Tracy, with the protection of whales? Of course, there was a time when they were being hunted for their oil, uh, hunted for their food, for their blubber. Uh, where are we with them now? Uh, are they protected? Can we be confident that the um, communities will grow? Yes, yeah, so, so um, whale populations are now protected and what they were concerned about with um, blue whales is that their numbers had become so low that, that their return was so gradual that they'd gotten below us. So it's exciting to see that there are more populations out there than, than we knew before. And we haven't seen these whales. These whales are right in the middle of the equatorial Indian Ocean where people don't go and do research. So the next step would be actually to, to um, for people to go out there and find these whales. We found those same sounds uh, of this whale population up as far as Sri Lanka and then across to the Australian coast off the Kimberley. So they're from the middle of the Indian Ocean up to Sri Lanka and all the way across this, uh, uh, across to Australia. So they roam over a really large area. Yeah, just a vast area. Let's hope we find them and get some good pictures of them soon. Okay, uh, Tracy Rogers from University of New South Wales, thank you very much for your time.